All right, so the recording is in progress. Hopefully everybody sees the PowerPoint screen. No, okay, hold on. Oh, I know why. Thank you, Joe, for shaking your head. I bet you see it now. Yep, thank you. Um, so, and during the recording, I'll probably still get a few people popping into the call, and that's fine. I'm going to move my controls over to my other monitor so I can watch for that stuff there. Good evening, everybody. I think we've, if you've not met me before, um, that's probably good for you. Uh, I'm Chris Osborne. I'm Vice President of Programs for First Indiana Robotics. And uh, we are nearing the start of our Rapid React season. You all have been at it, um, working away in the shops since early January. Uh, and, uh, and you know, for the first time in two years, uh, we're going to be uh, having robots on carpet. We're very excited about that. So this is a, an annual session I typically do, like I said before the recording started, um, typically with our new teams. But um, we have a lot of new teams essentially in the state, right? So we have a lot of teams with some new mentors, parents, students. Um, these calls, by the way, these coaches clinics calls are always open uh, to uh, anybody on your team. So if you've got some students, if you ever see a coaches clinic call topic, that you feel like, um, one of your students would be, um, it would be good for them to attend. Um, then I would say definitely, you know, send them the link or if you've got some parents, uh, I'll send out the link to the recording after this so that um, you can also share that with them to watch these. Um, you know, it, with two years, of course, also without um, our Purdue First Forums and IU Forums, those other types of events where we would come together and learn. I've wanted to fill a little bit of that void. This is certainly not anything to compare to the Purdue First Forums, but at least it starts to fill a little bit of a gap. And so really the big thing I wanna start off with is gracious professionals. And before we even talk about loading in and loading out, uh, you're gonna hear me say GP a lot, okay? Uh, and you can see there uh, our two founders on the right, uh, Dean Kamen and the, uh, his world famous denim. Uh, and then on the left, uh, Woody Flowers, Dr. Woody Flowers. And, um, you know, Dr. Flowers, uh, Woody, um, you know, helped coin the phrase gracious professionalism. It is really at the core of our ethos at first. Um, again, it's, uh, it's about win-win behaviors. It's about, uh, you know, I think Woody was famous for saying, you know, you, you're going to behave as if your grandmother is there watching you, right? Uh, we compete like crazy, but not at the expense of those around us. Um, you know, it, this is gracious professionalism is, is an even bigger concept than, than good sportsmanship. Uh, and so we, uh, this is something that we'll have a re-emphasis on this year is, again, we have a lot of new students to the program. And we'll want to make sure we emphasize this uh, and we emphasize gracious professionalism because this is the, this is more important that our kids learn these core values and learn these these ethos uh, concepts as they go into the workforce. Uh, those are the things that our sponsors, our our uh, university partners, tell us that they really see out of our youth. Yeah, they come in with some really cool tech skills, tech skills, but it's these uh, skills, the teamwork, the camaraderie, the um, gracious professionalism, uh, discovery, impact, inclusion, innovation, teamwork, and fun, the, the six core values at first. So you're going to hear GP quite a bit. I wanted to let you all know it is gracious professionalism. So, all right, loading in. So anytime you see our event schedule, if it's a Friday, Saturday competition, load in will be Thursday evening. Uh, typically, the pits will open at 5 p.m., um, and they will stay open until 10 p.m. that night before. Uh, that time, uh, some of the teams will just bring a skeleton crew uh, for loading that night, especially if they're going to be far enough away where there's going to be hotel stays. And so some of the teams to help offset costs will just send a smaller group that first night and then bring the rest of the team uh, the next morning. 
Certainly it's always up to the teams how they travel. This is just some things that we see, some best practices or some ideas, but you're always welcome to bring your whole team. There are usually also uh, things that we can, uh, we can do um, in terms of putting those kids to work and help uh, around the event. If you're a veteran team and you've got some veteran students uh, that kind of know their way around, another thing that you, those kids could do is, is help maybe some of the other teams and newer teams, our rookie teams. Uh, their heads up warning ahead of time, most of our venues will not have the concession stands open uh, during that load in evening. Uh, we've seen one or two in the past that will, uh, but typically if you're coming in that evening, uh, if you haven't eaten by the time you arrive, you're gonna wanna make arrangements uh, to eat um, separately. There, there won't be uh, usually food that night. Um, please be patient as, as you've got your trailer and your pickup trucks or your or cargo truck, whatever you're bringing, please be patient in the parking lot as teams are backing up and you know trying to get, uh, trying to get unloaded. Uh, there'll be a whole lot of teams trying to get in at once. Uh, safety glasses are going to be required the, the minute you walk in, as will masks, of course, uh, masks that are going to be required at all of our events through the rest of the spring. Uh, our board of directors did lift the, um, the limit on spectators, uh, but uh, masks and temperatures will be taken. And so we will have um, uh, set up at the load-in area to make sure that we're uh, hitting load-in crews um, to make sure we're taking temperatures. Uh, but masks and safety glasses, of course. Um, as you're setting up, uh, you can um, get a coach or your team representative over to the pit admin area to check in. We'll talk a little bit more about pit admin here in a few minutes, uh, but that's where you will turn in your roster, uh, make sure that all those names are checked off with those green check marks where, they've, where the students' parents have registered them online and have signed that first consent and release and that first Indiana consent and release on the first dashboard. Uh, it's really important that you all do that online. Now we do not have um, the capability of storing large num numbers of, of paper documents. So uh, we really, really need to have those done uh, online through the dashboard. Um, as your, um, so you get checked in, you'll get your uh, big envelope uh, filled with all the information you'll need. You won't have your match schedule yet. We'll talk a little bit about that in a minute, but you'll have your driver buttons and uh, other information about the events. Uh, once you're in and you're checked in, um, you can seek out an inspector to have your robot inspected. Uh, they'll be walking around with kind of these bright yellow or sort of greenish yellow hats uh, and, uh, and they can get you inspected. You're also gonna wanna make sure um, that you that your team gets over and gets their wireless radio uh, over to the computer that will encrypt it. Um, and so that's usually located uh, close to where the inspectors have the scale uh, to weigh the robots. Uh, but that announcements like that are usually made by pit admin to let you know where stuff like that is. Um, and uh, if you're a veteran team, again, uh, gosh, if you can help by seeing if rookie teams or maybe other teams that are uh, got some new coaches or mentors uh, need, need assistance, that's always welcome. Uh, and the practice field will be there. Please be nice about the practice field. This is again, our uh, a GP moment. Uh, please be graciously professional about your, your time on the practice field and using some of the elements to uh, practice on. Take turns. Uh, also, please be gentle with our practice field equipment. It's not it's usually not made out of the same rugged materials as the actual field. And we have to take that practice field with us to every event. Uh, so please be gentle. Uh, match schedules will be distributed as soon as every team is checked in. Uh, so it, after every team gets checked in, PIT admin uh, makes uh, the, uh, the event coordinators aware of that they get everything into the system and generate those match schedules. There may or may not be practice matches that first night. Uh, we're hoping there will be. We're being told right now that they're, they're looking at uh, this year's field is taking about seven hours to uh, build. So if we can get in and get in at a decent hour and start getting the field set up, uh, you know, we may be able to get some practice matches. Uh, if you can get your robot out there, that's a great way to ensure that your robot's communicating with the field 
uh, it's a good way to make sure that um, you know the the CSA, which we'll talk about that in a minute, um, that in the FTAs, that if there are any issues, they can help you work those out. So quite a bit there on load in. Uh, here's a sample schedule. Just want to hit a few things here on the sample schedule. Again, when we're looking at a Saturday uh, Sunday event. Friday would be the load in night. And you can see here 5 to 10 p.m. pits open, there's inspections. Now, in this schedule, it said optional tour of the uh, Dean's List and Chairman's interview rooms. That won't be happening at our events because all the uh, judging will be remote. So there won't be uh, any Dean's List or Chairman's interview rooms. And, uh, and then day one of competition. So that next day after the load in evening, doors open at 8 a.m. And, uh, and that's when the pits will open. Uh, you can also, if, if you hadn't gotten your robot inspected the night before, uh, and there will be, and hopefully there, there will be some practice rounds. Again, some of that is, you know, to get the field uh, in tune and get all of you uh, ready to go. Uh, opening ceremonies, roughly, uh, usually around 1030 on that first day. Uh, you'll hear this a couple of times, but uh, another moment of gracious professionalism, we just ask all the teams attend the opening ceremonies. Uh, so please don't be in the pits, uh, making noise and working on your robot. Uh, we'd like you to be in the opening ceremonies. We usually have some guest speakers and other things. Um, now, before that opening ceremonies event, uh, there is one thing that's, this is the public schedule. There will be a driver's meeting. And uh, so those of you who haven't been at our events before, usually sometime between that, when the, when the doors open, and opening ceremonies, there'll be announcements made. Uh, the head referee will meet with the drive teams to um, uh, to go over uh, some of the things, rules, if there's been any rules updates, um, how the matches are going to be called, etc. Um, we most likely, I'm sure, 99.99 percent will not be having our drivers' meetings down on the field like we used to. We'll probably have a section of. Uh, um, bleachers, where we'll have the team spread out a little bit to do that. Uh, then um, qualification matches begin. Uh, so that first day in the afternoon uh, will be pretty much all qualification matches. And, uh, and then um, usually we don't really have any closing ceremonies. We may have some closing announcements. Uh, but then the important note here is pits close at 8 p.m. Uh, and what we really want there um, is we are turning out the lights at 8 p.m. in the area where the pits are, uh, are not only you uh, and your students, but our volunteers um, and everybody else have had a really long day. In this case, uh, some of our volunteers have already had a long two days. And so we really want to get everybody out by 8 p.m. Uh, then the next day, uh, Sunday in this case, uh, doors open again at 8 a.m. So the pits will open at 8. Um, that sometimes on day two, we will have another set of opening ceremonies. If we do, again, we just always ask folks come in and attend that. Uh, we'll get back into qualification matches, then into alliance selections as we near lunch. I'll talk a little bit about that here in a few minutes. And after alliance selections are done, we'll go to lunch. That gives the uh, alliance, uh, these alliances that are going to be in the playoffs a chance to meet and strategize and do some other things. Uh, then we'll uh, we'll get back from lunch and get the playoffs going, uh, declare a winner, and usually very shortly after the last match, uh, we will be uh, having our award ceremony, and and then uh, we really want we hope that uh, the that last team is rolling out the door and heading home by six thirty. Uh, the pits will close because then our goal is is. The, the trucks loaded with our stuff are not too far behind. A couple other um, activities that take place. Um, our scholarship rows will be on the day one of events. Uh, they will not be there all day. They're gonna be there roughly around like 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. on that first day. There will be scavenger hunt opportunities for your students. Encourage them to go visit scholarship row. $81 million in college scholarships from over 200 providers. Uh, encourage your sophomores and juniors to, to go get information and meet them. Uh, the scavenger hunt, uh, the students can take part in that. It's fun. 
that they'll be entered into a drawing where they could win a really fun swag bag from one of our universities. Uh, we will have student ambassador training because we will have VIPs at the events. So if you have some students that you think are really good um, and would do a good job of, of giving some tours, uh, we're going to have quite a few VIPs um, at Kokomo. We've got uh, a really exciting buzz around quite a few uh, school districts looking at starting up our C teams next year. And so uh, that'll be really great to have uh, students to help with that. Uh, there also may be some roundtable conversations our student board of directors are working on. And um, moving on. All right, places at the event. Where, where do you go? What do you do? What's going on at these events? So pit admin, I mentioned that. There'll be a table. There'll be a couple of people there. Uh, you'll see me there fairly regularly. Uh, and that is where you, it is an all-purpose location. Uh, when you're in the pits, if anything is going on, if you left a specialized tool at home or, or maybe not even specialized, you just you left the socket wrench set at home, come over to pit admin and we'll make an announcement and, and you'll have more socket wrenches than, than you need within a few moments. Our, our teams are always so generous with each other and help. Uh, if you have any kind of questions about schedules, events, things like that, Pit admin's usually a good place. If we or the people working there don't know the answer, they've got a radio on them and they can usually find an answer. There will also be a lot of announcements coming from Pit admin. Uh, you'll want to be making sure that you're paying attention to those. Uh, we usually try to um, keep up with announcements on queuing. Uh, that's really important. Please keep your eye on when your match schedules are and when you should be queuing. Uh, the better you can keep your students and your team uh, on top of that and make sure they're queuing when they're supposed to, we keep the event moving forward and moving smoothly. Um, the uh, volunteer check-in, um, if you uh, are volunteering at our events, there's usually a separate place for volunteers to check in. Uh, there they'll have uh, information for you on, on what you'll be doing that day. Uh, we often are looking for students um, uh, and other folks to help us with field reset at our events. Uh, and so that is also something you could do. You could help us with field reset. Then you go to volunteer check-in. We certainly want to give you credit for volunteering at our events. And we usually have volunteer shirts and, and other things like that. Uh, the practice field I mentioned earlier, that'll be located usually in the area where the pits are. Um, it's not a full field. And those of you who've been there, you know, it's, it's usually just a series of some of the elements uh, from the game, uh, and, but it's usually close to the pit area. Uh, the field, uh, that'll be in the main gym. That's a place at our event. That's where you're gonna watch the competition. Uh, safety glasses are gonna be required on or near the field, not in the stands, uh, but if, usually you'll see a set of stanchions if you cross over those stanchions to go into the driver stations or in the queuing area, we do require safety glasses. Uh, I'll probably mention this a couple of times tonight, but I do want to make sure we reiterate, we will not be lending safety glasses. So there will not be a table anymore where we have a bunch of safety glasses sitting out that people can just borrow and return. Everyone needs to bring their own. We will be giving our volunteers, uh, especially judges and other key volunteer safety glasses. Uh, please tell your students to make sure they bring theirs. If they don't, we will have some there, but they will be there for purchase, uh, but not to borrow. Um, as soon as they buy them, they're theirs to keep for good. Um, the um, scholarship row I mentioned, not only uh, will we have universities providing scholarships there, but there may be some other organizations, um, Triangle Fraternity, uh, other companies, um, sponsors, et cetera, that uh, usually might have tables set up. They have some cool information. Uh, definitely worth uh, your students to get out there and, and uh, learn as much as they can about the, the folks in Scholarship Row. Uh, the question box, I mentioned this. This is an area down there in the field. There are two spots. Uh, there's a red and a blue. Um, and this is where one of your students, uh, mentors, adult mentors are not allowed in the question box. This is where students go uh, if they have a question about uh, something that happened during the match. And it could be why was something called or not called or just you know an explanation of a rule, uh, et cetera. 
Uh, make sure that your students are prepared when they go to the question box. Uh, make sure, hopefully, uh, sometimes when they go in there, they could be um, excited or it could be they're upset about something. Make sure that this is another great opportunity to exercise gracious professionalism um, and, uh, and listen to the referees as they explain their call. Uh, there are no replays in first events. There are no video replays. Uh, judges calls, um, the, the judges can uh, decide to replay a match or they can make other decisions, but ultimately their decisions will be final. So uh, just make sure your students know this is a good learning opportunity. Uh, judges rooms, um, there won't be any at this event, um, but only judges are allowed in there. Uh, the event room, you'll see signs for that. That's just for staff and event staff. Uh, we'll have a volunteer room usually. That's usually where the volunteers can go and get coffee and snacks in the morning, or we we'll usually feed them there, and that'll be just for our volunteers. Uh, we will have a quiet room at our events. I put any there because that means that's for anyone. So if you do have some students who maybe are experiencing high levels of maybe some stress or anxiety or uh, the noise or things like that, um, and it could even be a parent with a child or something, this would be a chance to, this is a room where they can just go and be quiet. All right, people at an event. So I mentioned Pitt Admin. I told you a little bit about them um, and what they do. Uh, again, just this is sort of a, um, a great place to go with whatever question. Uh, usually we'll have people come up and if they've lost something, um, we'll usually have a lost and found somewhere at the event. Um, and so if it's not located at Pitt Admin, um, we'll know where lost and found is. Uh, please, 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 please. We've had we've had students lose very valuable things at our events. Um, we actually have had a student lose um, a Nintendo Switch at an event. Um, I, they didn't lose it. I think it uh, it got up and walked away possibly. But um, make sure you know things like that that they understand. They bring those things you know at their own risk. Um, and so make sure maybe stuff like that can stay home for the weekend. Uh, the cures, the team queuing, uh, these folks, uh, volunteers, they're going to be making sure your teams are put in the right spots as they come into the gym to get queued up for their match. They may also be coming around the pits and um, asking, you know, teams, hey, you need to be queuing. Uh, again, a great moment to exercise uh, gracious professionalism. If a volunteer is asking your team to go get queued, uh, the correct answer is okay, and we'll go get queued now. <laughs> um, that these folks uh, are on their feet all weekend, and we want to make sure we we treat them with uh, all the GP we can. Uh, judges, while judging will be remote this year, um, we will have a few judge observers um, at each event, and usually the JA will also be at the event uh, to make sure that after all the remote interviews are done, they'll have a follow-up call uh, just to make sure that what they saw in the interviews lines up with uh, what the judge observers uh, were seeing at the competition. And they'll usually be wearing blue polos. Um, and those of you who have not been around first, that they'll have a blue polo and it'll say judge on it. You won't necessarily know what they're judging um, and it's not, they won't tell you what they're there to judge, um, but uh, they will be walking around talking to people. So uh, referees, they'll be down on the field. Uh, only the students can ask uh, referees for uh, clarification on match issues. We also don't boo at our referees in, in first. That would not be GP. And uh, we don't yell at the referees. Uh, we There may be times we don't necessarily like what they call, um, and but we will exercise um, maturity uh, in those moments and make sure that uh, we know that everyone there is a volunteer and is giving of their time and and uh, and everything else to you know help to make this a great experience for our kids. Uh, the event manager, this person is sort of in charge of the event. And I say sort of, they really are in charge of the event. They are usually going to know the answer to a lot of questions and they'll know who to go to for specific things. And so if you're not sure and we can find the event manager and you're not sure what, if we're not sure, they'll usually know the answer uh, and be able to get you to the right person to solve whatever dilemma that you're having. Uh, the field supervisor, uh, 
they help oversee setup and teardown of the field. Uh, the FTA and FTAA, uh, this is our field technical advisors. They are very visible. They're out, they are really, their main job is to make sure that the event runs smoothly. And so they'll be there to work on any kind of field issues or problems. Uh, they'll be the ones to give the thumbs up that the field is ready for a match, that everybody's ready to go. Um, and, uh, and But they also can be very super helpful if you're having issues with your robot. Uh, along with the CSA, which is the next one, the control system advisor, this person really is trained to be there to help teams with any type of communication issue they may be having, whether it's Wi-Fi or coding or whatever, they will they can help you and your team uh, kind of work through some of the technical issues. If you know you're having issues when you arrive, um, it's really good to start asking around to see who the CSA is. So on that load-in evening, if they're there, maybe get some of their help or even get another team to help you. Uh, the MC game announcers, they are the, you know, they get out and they, uh, introduce the teams at every match. Uh, they'll be um, calling the game, uh, kind of a play-by-play. -play. Uh, other than that, of course, they, they don't have anything to do with the, the rules or calling the game or anything like that. Uh, they're, they're there to kind of make the event lively and fun. It is a big job though, and we usually rotate several through because it's a lot of uh, talking and a lot of being on your feet. Our robot inspectors. So you'll see them that team load in night. Uh, they'll, like I said, they'll be wearing the inspectors hats. Um, your robot will be inspected prior to competition. There may be, if you make any kind of major changes uh, to your robot um, during the competition time frame, they may, uh, I say they, someone, uh, FTA or CSA or someone else may ask you to get your robot reinspected. Uh, but then your robot. Uh, will uh, most likely be reinspected. It won't be a full inspection usually, but it'll be there'll be a reinspection right before the playoffs. Uh, and then student ambassadors. Uh, these are I mentioned them. These would be your students. We'd love to have them uh, come out and help us uh, give tours. I am going to send this um, out to everybody, by the way, because there are links embedded in this, and I'll send this out as a PDF file. Uh, for example, down at the bottom uh, of this slide, there's a link that takes you to the First Inspires website that has the list of every volunteer and a description of what they do. That's kind of partially good for you to know because it might help you to know who you should talk to. But also, if you ever decide you may want to help volunteer at an event, that would be great. All right. How do you report something that happens? Well, what could happen? Well, a couple of things could happen in an event. One could be a medical incident, an injury. Uh, we are playing with 125 pound robots and we're in the pits and we're um, you know, working with tools and things. If you're injured, um, you definitely wanna get help. Um, we will have folks in the building. Uh, it could be an EMT, nurse, et cetera. Uh, and they will handle the reporting of the medical incident uh, with our staff. Uh, hopefully no one gets injured to where they would need an ambulance or be taken to the hospital, but just like with all youth activities, with youth sports or whatever, that could happen and we will we'll just handle that as it happens. Then there are what are called non-medical incidents. Uh, these are mostly tied around youth protection concerns. So what we would want to make sure we report are any violations of the first code of conduct. So hopefully you've all read over the first code of conduct. And again, this comes down to gracious professionalism. Again, good or bad sportsmanship. If you feel like a, a mentor on another team or a mentor on your own child's team uh, is not treating that child um, with respect and is not treating them nicely, et cetera. Uh, concerns of sexual or physical assault, uh, concerns around bullying, hazing, or, har or harassment of any kind. Um, if you have an issue with a volunteer, if one of our volunteers has been um, anything but professional with you and, and gracious, you know, uh, providing world, that kind of world-class customer service that we hope that all of us provide. Um, so volunteer misconduct, rude behavior, uh, any violations of the first code of conduct or other event-related concerns like non 
uh, non-urgent concerns that may arise in an event, including safety hazards or concerns regarding uh, parking, bathrooms, lack of seating, wiring issues, um, et cetera. Um, those are the kinds of things that could that you could end up filing what's called a non-medical incident report. And we we want those reported because we want to make sure our events are always getting better and better and better. And we want our volunteers to always be better, right? Um, and so events, event-related concerns, you don't really report using this online form. And, and I have a link to it here. We will also have computers are events. If you come to the event manager, or to a, a judge advisor or, um, or any of the real main leading volunteers at our events, uh, you could come to me um, and say that you would like to file a non-medical incident report. We can make sure we get you the link to do that, okay? But some things that aren't really things that would raise to the level of filing one of those would be feedback about gameplay, oh, this game stinks and I don't like it at all and it's really boring. Uh, rule changes, you didn't like the you know, Team 10 update. Uh, award descriptions. Um, you can send first emails about those things, please. They want feedback, but you send them an email to first robotics competition at firstinspires.org. Uh, please note that match results and award results are final. They will not go back and review and change stuff. Uh, they will not review videos. Uh, concerns that are more urgent and can only be addressed at the event, such as an immediate safety issue or event rule violations like seat saving. And that's one of those that I'll get to in a minute. You're not allowed to save seats at our events. We're not going to fill out that form for that. But if you come to us, uh, if we, we can help you resolve that situation, um, fortunately, in Indiana, our venues are usually really nice and big and comfortable and have plenty of room for everybody. Uh, but sometimes on day two, going into playoffs, sometimes seating can get pretty tight. And we just, the, the rule is we're going to be graciously professional. And if you have an open seat uh, in the bleacher and somebody sits down there, that's their seat. Uh, if it's an open seat, it's theirs. Um, help in an event. How could you help? We're always seeking uh, help in a variety of ways. If your team has a photographer uh, or somebody that really loves to take pictures or videos, we'd really love to have them. Hugh Meyer, who helps us run our media rooms, will have a separate room set up for that. They can go talk to Hugh. There'll be announcements about when he'll have his media uh, team conversations. He'll have media t-shirts for them and get them a badge. They can get down close to the field. Uh, help take a, uh, really great pictures and videos for us and make compilation videos. It's really great experience. Uh, we'd, and the more, the, the better. We get more pictures and we have better pictures to choose from. Uh, field reset. Um, again, volunteers can sign up to do that at events. Um, we'd love that. And then finally, your team can uh, help keep an eye on teams that may be struggling. Um, if you see a team that might be smaller this year, maybe they don't have that many kids, gosh, you could offer to have them, you know, share your scouting data with them, um, you know, share how you do things, uh, have teams, you know, ha maybe have a couple students come sit in the stands with you and talk to them about how you evaluate robots and how you do pit scouting or things like that. Uh, we'll have young teams and rebuilding teams uh, at the event that are going to need a lot of help. All right, some generic rules for events. No Wi-Fi hotspots. Hold on, please. Sorry, I need a drink of water. Uh, this includes any area of the building, the pits, the field area, et cetera. Wi-Fi hotspots can inter interfere with robot performance and field performance. Uh, so please make sure uh, you have those turned off if they're currently turned on when you get to our venue. We will be making a, um, announcements about that and we'll be coming around um, with uh, some, we have apps that we can see them. So we'll, we'll let people know that they have them still turned on. Um, usually it's just a couple of, uh, we usually only make a few announcements and usually everybody gets them turned on. No saving seats, I talked about that. Please do not come in and throw all your coats across a bench or a bunch of other things, um, et cetera. Also between the two days, uh, you cannot leave your stuff in the stands. So at the end of day one, you gotta take everything with you and bring it back on day two 
which keep in mind, that means on day two, you might not be sitting in the same area you were sitting in day one. Um, and that's just the way it is. Uh, safety glasses are required in the pits and on the field. I mentioned this before, we will have some there to purchase, not borrow. Um, and, uh, and so I would just prep your students for that. Uh, do not be in the pits during opening or closing ceremonies, um, please. It, we want everybody to be out in the stands when we're giving out the awards. Uh, please pick up after yourself and have your students pick up after themselves. Help keep our venues clean. The more we can do at the you know at the end of day one, if we can go through with some garbage bags and help clean up, um, it just helps us in terms of um, paying for um, custodial staffs, etc. Please tell your students to not wander. Uh, we have been given specific areas of school buildings that we can be in. Some will have the gates and other doors where they can't wander, but some aren't set up like that. Uh, so just make sure, please, to tell your students, don't go where you're not supposed to. Um, have fun, cheer loud, um, and make sure, you know, these events are awesome. And the, the kids who've never experienced this before, I'm so excited that they're going to get to experience this. Uh, the students that have experienced it have been away for two years. Uh, you know, I'm excited to have them back. Um, and tell your students to get out there and make friends, walk, you know, walk through the pits, go up in the stands and see this other team that seems to have all sorts of really great uh, team spirit and ask them, you know, how do they organize their team spirit and uh, go just meet people and learn from each other. Uh, that's what we're there for. Uh, other things to do, I mentioned Scholarship Row and there will be door prizes. Uh, attend a roundtable conversation. Some of those conversations will announce are for the students, but um, it, but adults can come hang out too. Uh, we um, will welcome you. Uh, some of the roundtable conversations may be um, geared towards mentors or coaches. Students would also be welcome in those. Um, tell your students to also get their dance and shoes ready. If you remember at our events, there'll be quite a bit of dancing, especially during our uh, field timeouts. It's been a long time. Uh, and now the playoffs. As we've gone through the first day and a half of qualification matches, your team will get anywhere between 10 and 12 qualification matches. And at the end of those qualification matches, the top eight teams will then be brought out. Um, every team will send a student representative uh, and we'll be making all sorts of announcements about that leading up to that. We'll bring them out near the field. We'll bring the eight top eight out onto the field. And then they will pick two robots and we'll go one through eight and then back eight through one uh, to pick the alliances that will be together in the playoffs. And the playoffs will um, be, you know, one versus eight, two versus seven, et cetera, uh, quarterfinals, semifinals, finals. And each round is always the best two out of three. Um, the, there's only one rule during alliance selections. If your team says no, uh, to another team that's asking you to be on their alliance, you now cannot be selected by another alliance. The example is that if the first seed alliance picks the number four seed and the number four seed comes over and says, we respectfully decline your invitation, they go back, they are now locked in, as an alliance captain, because now the number two seat alliance and the number three seat alliance captains cannot pick that team as their cap as as a member of their alliance. Okay. Uh, so just make sure your teams are aware of that. Uh, teams can interpick in those top eight. So one could pick two, right? And two, and if if they did, two would be on their alliance, and then we would just shift all the teams around. We'd make three, two, four would become third, etc. Then we would bring the ninth seat alliance in, and now they are the eighth seat alliance captain. Uh, sometimes there is very little picking between uh, the top eight, uh, and sometimes there is a lot of picking uh, between the top eight. Please make sure your students are gracious uh, about their response. And not only that, 
but let's make sure we as the audience is also gracious to the students on the field. If a team declines another team's invitation, it is not a personal slant against that other team. In some cases, it's just strategy, right? It's a game. And sometimes they are playing the points game. Sometimes they're saying, you know, they would rather be an alliance captain. Um, and maybe they just don't feel like the team that's asking them on their alliance is the right fit for them. It's not personal. It's the game. So, you know, we don't want to boo teams that say no. Uh, they, there's reasons. So um, please make sure your students are prepared. Uh, it can be kind of a nerve wracking experience to be down there and be the alliance captain or be the uh, student representative. Um, they will be given some time. Sometimes things happen. Uh, a team may have their choices all ready to go and they may be the fourth or fifth seed. And by the time it gets to them, a couple of the teams they, they wanted have been picked. Uh, and so uh, the um, MCs are always really good with just the students on that. Uh, after Alliance selections are over, um, the next four highest ranked teams uh, will be asked to keep the robots in the ready. Um, in case a robots on one of the playoff alliances um, stops working for some reason, then that alliance can choose from that pool of four that are available to be on them. It's, it, um, it's not necessarily in rank order, but it is rank order that those next four are, stay ready. Um, it, um, after that, the after alliance selections, um, the alliance captains are usually asked to stay and talk to the head referee. Then we'll go to lunch. There'll be some time to get ready for playoffs. Uh, and Teams that were not selected uh, and are not in that top four are more than welcome to start packing up and uh, getting their stuff ready to go home at that point. But we certainly hope that they stick around for the award ceremony. Uh, award ceremony. Do not be in the pits during the award ceremony. Uh, make sure to applaud for every team that wins an award. We wanna make sure we give everybody the recognition. Uh, if your team wins an award, uh, make sure to follow the directions on how to go down to the field. Also be prepared, there will be no high fives this year. So uh, please uh, tell your students, no high fives. Uh, we'll have announcements on what we'll be doing instead. We may do jazz hands or, or something else, but uh, no high fives. Um, make sure to follow the directions to get your team picture taken with your award. Make sure to share the news about your award on social media with your community, et cetera. Uh, do a press release. Um, and after the competition. And we have templates that you can use. So um, again, I have a link to a Google Drive here in this presentation, you'll all get it afterwards. Um, you can go to that Google Drive and there are uh, several different press releases, uh, templates in there, fill in the blanks, find some local newspapers, local radio stations, et cetera, send that information out. The, the more coverage, the more press, uh, it, it makes your team uh, noticed in the community and who knows, it could lead to a new sponsor or a couple of mentors or something. So uh, always make sure to get press releases out to the community. Uh, loadout. Teams are requested to be out of the pits. I said 6 p.m., but it, um, sometimes it's 6.30 uh, at the end of the competition. We really uh, also, we want to be out of there. It's been a long weekend. I know you all want to get home and the kids want to get home. It's a Saturday, Sunday event. I know you all have school on Monday. Uh, our school-based teams, uh, but the kids that aren't on school-based teams also usually have school on Monday. Uh, be patient and safe as several teams, again, are gonna be attempting to load out at once. Make sure to double check your pit area, uh, the stands, et cetera, people leave things. Uh, if you get home and you've lost something and it's something significant, um, reach out to Dan Leathers. Um, we can usually check our inventory. Um, we usually don't we wouldn't usually check that um, between events. It would be when we get to our next event and we're unloading, um, we have come across things um, that then we're able to get to teams. Usually after an event, our stuff gets sent back and it's put in storage and uh, we don't go near it again until it's time to load the truck to go to the next event. Uh, social media, it's pretty easy. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, we are first in robotics. Make sure while you're at the event, share pictures, short videos, 
inspirational things, tweets, Instagram. Uh, make sure you share with your um, the folks that are maybe staying behind uh, that uh, we will be live streaming on Twitch. Um, we are also potentially looking at simultaneously live streaming on a couple of other platforms. We will let the world know that as we get closer to those events. It, there are quite a few things that will determine whether or not we will be able to do that. Uh, but we definitely will be streaming um, on Twitch for all of our events. So if anybody's at home and wants to watch, and also if if uh, you're not going to week one, but you want to watch the competition, you want to see how the other Indiana teams are doing, tune into Twitch uh, and watch. And good luck. So I'm going to stop sharing. Bring my back. Um, and uh, that's the presentation. I'm going to stop recording.